Let, let's dive into your East and West breakdown, Phil. We'll first, of course, talk about the SEC East and how you pick these teams. You've got Georgia, of course, winning the SEC East, and I would agree with you. I think it's Georgia, and then I think there's a huge gap. You've got Florida finishing second, Kentucky at third, Missouri at fourth, South Carolina at fifth, Tennessee at sixth, and Vanderbilt at seventh. Just talk about really quickly, briefly, your SEC East breakdown. Again, the Gamecocks finishing fifth overall, but your overall outlook at the SEC East. Well, my overall outlook at the SEC East is Georgia. <laughs> I think Georgia <laughs> wins the East, and then everybody else is probably a couple games behind them, and it's for two reasons. Georgia's got the defense again this year. They have my number three rated defense in the country. JT Daniels took over a quarterback finally for the final four games last year. They put up 37 points per game. They got my number two set of running backs in the country, number seven rated offensive line. So you got the offense and the defense, you know, number seven offensive line, number two defensive line in the country. And then the schedule. Uh, they only have three true SEC road games this year, and all three are against first-year head coaches, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, and Auburn. That means everybody else has to go between the hedges, <laughs> or Florida is, of course, at a neutral site. Florida, on the other hand, only has five starters back on offense, five on defense, and they're the opposite. They only get three home games in the swamp this year, and they, while Georgia avoids Alabama, Texas A&M, and LSU out of the West – Florida draws both Alabama and LSU and has to play LSU in Death Valley. How do you even think those two teams are going to be close? I think it's at least a two game margin for Georgia between them and everybody else in the East. In fact, I've got Georgia a three point dog in the opener against Clemson and I have them favored in all their other games this year. So I think they walk away with the East uh, Florida. Uh, looks like they might be going through a rebuilding year with only 10 mm -hmm. starters back, especially keep this in mind, talking to the coaches like I did this year, uh, about 110 of the 130 head coaches out there. Uh, almost all of them have 16, 17, 18 returning starters coming back. Mm -hmm. So when you only have 10 back, that's among the least experienced in the country and the rough schedule. And then it's, it's pretty much uh, up for grabs as to who's going to get third, fourth or fifth there. I, I think there's a, a good talent in the East. I do pick Vanderbilt for seventh. I think Clark Lee stepping into a rebuilding situation. For sure. Now the West, Phil, I think it's no secret, of course, the no-brainer pick, Alabama. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Until somebody dethrones the Crimson Tide, there's no reason to go any other direction. So you've got Alabama winning the SEC West. Texas A&M at two, which I think is certainly going to be the sexy pick, if you will, the dark horse to dethrone Nick Saban. Uh, but you've got them second, LSU third, Ole Miss fourth, Auburn fifth, Mississippi State sixth, and Arkansas seventh. I'll ask you about the SEC West. And again, when you break down the West, is it as simple as – Alabama, and then just everybody else, like you mentioned, the East was with Georgia. Uh, actually, that's a little bit of a surprise. I, I think a and has got a shot. And, uh, you know, you take a look at Texas a and Jimbo Fisher's got four great recruiting classes. Uh, I think Haynes King is going to step in at quarterback and do just as good as Kellamon did last year. Talking to Coach Jimbo Fisher and going over the offense with them, you know, they were a Joe Moore finalist last year, and they're losing four starters. And I mentioned my concern to that to Coach Fisher, and he said, Phil, we may be more athletic, more physical, and better up front on the offensive line than we were last year. So that sort of compensates for losing four starters. They they get five games to get the offensive line gelling and then they host Alabama. And if you watch last year's Alabama Texas A&M game in the first half, it's like three or four plays and A&M, I thought played them dead even except this play went there. It was like four plays that went against them. And all of a sudden they were down uh, by uh, three scores at the half and, and ended up losing by 28. I think they can give Alabama a game. It's in college station. It's week six. And if anybody's going to knock off Alabama in the West, it's A&M. And then LSU would be the next team to make a jump this year. They go from mm. barely getting to five and five last year. They need the shoe toss against Florida and the uh, <laughs> comeback against Ole Miss. But uh, I think they'll be closer to a double-digit win team this season. But a and is a clear threat to, to knock off Bama this year. For sure. And, Phil, you're SEC champion, and do you have an early college football playoff champion pick? Yeah, I went way out on a limb here, uh, Chris. <laughs> I, I took uh, Alabama to win the SEC, and uh, my final four is Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. How's that for being a risk taker? 